So, uh, John Roberts with Ginny Bedanes uh, from uh, Microsoft, Director of Strategic Projects um, and, uh, at Microsoft. And uh, uh, so, it, Ginny, um, we've been talking for, I guess, uh, over a year now, uh, maybe, uh, I guess we could say years. <laughs> So um, one of the things that's been consistent in our conversations about uh, what can be done, what, uh, how uh, technology, even more importantly, open source technology could be applied into, uh, into the elections realm and improve things with more competition. Um, so uh, we've been talking consistently about LA, Los Angeles, uh, the county registrar's project, long running project, very expensive, but um, ultimately I hope very successful uh, VSAP, I believe it's called Voting Systems for All People now. Um, and uh, it's a very large municipal project. Um, it just went through, um, it's gone through, I, I guess, a, a kind of a soft launch over the last few years where they did vote by mail. But recently, they actually ran through the primary in March in, Cal in California, but specifically in Los Angeles County. And uh, they had some problems, uh, which is uh, to be expected in such a large rollout. And I think they had some successes. Um, so uh, I, I think it has some similarities to the, the project that uh, Microsoft has been working on, Election Guard. So I was interested in uh, how you see um, uh, VSAP adoption and evolution playing out over the next few years. Sure. Yeah, the VSAP project is really innovative, and you listed a lot of the reasons why. Um, the ways in which, you know, you might draw some parallels to some of the efforts that we've been doing, though on a certainly much smaller scale, recognizing what they're undertaking, um, is really focusing on the voter. What, what are the needs of the voters? How do we bring them technology and solutions um, while still paying attention to the big things such as security and enfranchisement, and making sure that you're not um, you're not removing some of those issues for, uh, for folks who might be on the margins. Um, maybe they have disabilities or otherwise, but they've been very, very focused on what the voters need and what could be beneficial to them. And so the program that they built with, with uh, the voting system for all people, the VSAP, is, um, is really a comprehensive program that includes a machine um, that does create a ballot um, where the individual can then feed the ballot back in and, and be counted from there. Um, and they've had some really, I thought, creative approaches to how they rolled it out. To your point, they did a series of, um, they did a series of block parties, they did some mock elections. They were really trying to do some um, strong user testing and, uh, and, and making sure that it's um, a good system for the people who will be using it. Um, and you, know, you have to consider some of the things that LA County is up against, such as the number of languages that are spoken there. Um, I know that I've seen a demo of the system and spoken to the team there. And that was something that I don't think I'd have fully appreciated until I saw it was how many different languages you can get your ballot in. And so sometimes technology does give you an advantage in order to make the system better for voters. And that's one really distinct advantage that is in particular of importance in a place like LA County, um, where if they were to print paper ballots in all of those different languages and have enough available for all the voters, that would be uh, quite a feat. So it doing that in an electronic way is really helpful. They've recently moved to voting centers, which I, I think was um, a necessary component of them moving to this new technology because um, it is so uh, more expensive and, um, and having consolidated voting centers makes sense. But also one of the big changes of doing that is they've moved to a digital electronic registration yeah. system uh, where essentially me as a voter, if I lived in uh, Los Angeles County, I live a little bit north of there, um, that uh, I can go anywhere in the city at any time because uh, they have a, um, a week run up uh, to uh, voting now in Los Angeles sure. um, and uh, um, vote. So um, I think that contributed to some of the problems that they, they, they had. Can you uh, speak on that a little bit? Or? That's, that's my understanding as well. Now, again, the idea of vote centers and the ability to go in early again voter centric choices that have been made um, so that you can vote when and where you'd like. Um, but yeah, that means that in order to ensure that Sean only votes one time, which is incredibly important, right. they have to have electronic records that sync in some kind of frequency with other vote centers to ensure that you don't go vote center to vote center and vote. Um, and those, you know, they have a strong program built out for that, but it does require 
um, some technology that I, from what I've read, and I don't have any um, insight on this beyond what's been available in the media, but from what I've read and understood, that was one of the areas where they had the most trouble is if these electronic poll books weren't sinking or slowing down, um, it created issues for people to, a little bit of a bottleneck for people to actually go to the voting system and vote. Um, that was that was what I heard from LA County in their report that they put out. They did a full audit of what happened in the primary. Um, so it's, it's just a reminder of how complex these elections are. You know, you think that you've got it all nailed down because you have this great system that you've tested a million times and then it's the poll book that causes the issue. Um, and there are other areas within the election where problems can occur as well. One thing is the people right now, if you consider, um, you need volunteers in order to make these elections work. Right. And um, due to COVID and other circumstances, your typical poll worker is opting out this time around. Mm -hmm. And so there's a huge movement to encourage younger people who are at lower risk of, of contracting coronavirus to volunteer to be a poll worker. Uh, because a lot of people are voting in person. I know there's been so much talk about voting by mail and, and that's very important to have alternatives such as absentee voting, but people will still be showing up on election day um, for whatever reason. Um, it might be their personal choice. It might be just the way that it works in their area, but they need to have volunteers there running the polls in order for it to work. So you can plan for as much uh, as, as you think might occur. And then something like a pandemic comes along and throws your plans up in the air. So is, uh, I believe I, I read it in a, a couple different places. So I, I think it's relatively decently placed information that the, due to the age of some of the poll workers and uh, uh, when they were trained, and that happens at vast majority of places, they train poll workers and they go out into the world and you know, on election day, they, they do their job um, as mm -hmm. trained. But their experience, if you're somebody who's older, has most experience with older systems, when something goes wrong, you turn it off. And you turn it back on and apparently that led to some of the problems the way that the poll books apparently from what i was reading georgia used the same system and experienced some of the same problems or when you turn them on and off it causes it to f do a full resync full of the database which overloaded yeah. the network and so this is is not uh, this is uh, um, tertiary reporting at best but um, it does seem like if something like that happened that would certainly exacerbate any kind of network congestion which i would assume uh, the the city network um, that supports uh, elections. Uh, this is probably one of the first runs of this particular technology running over it. So there's guaranteed to be some issues, and it just couldn't have helped. So, but, it, uh, but to that point, what you're what you're emphasizing is less of a technology problem, more of a people problem, sure. or a process problem, which sure. is a, a training issue. And look, as all these new poll workers flood into the process, which I hear is happening, which is a wonderful thing. Right. You're talking about brand new poll workers who have never worked an election before and training them to not just know the technology, but to know the process um, is incredibly important. I know that, you know, it tends to be the same poll worker that works year after year after year. So if you don't change the system on them, they generally know what they're doing. Um, sure. Of course, systems need to change for a variety of reasons. Well, uh, so folks in LA, it changed radically. <laughs> Something did. didn't have it paper anymore. Change. Yeah, it needed to, I mean, there's reasons that our processes evolve. Um, but our trainings need to keep up, right? We need to make right. sure that the poll workers are trained with what, they, um, with what they're going to be using on election day. Um, and when you have a lot of new people coming in, you've just added a new variable, uh, which is ensuring that those folks are well-trained. Well, I really am looking forward to talking to you more about this. I hope to uh, uh, talk to, I know they've had their heads down and they're really working hard on getting ready for uh, November. I hope to uh, talk to some of the folks uh, from that team and, um, get some of those uh, public meetings on technology going again. So really looking forward to that. Um, the VSAP technology is really one of a kind. It's uh, not open source. I uh, uh, didn't want to allude to that, but there is some hope that uh, some of the technology could bleed into open source over the next couple of years. But even more importantly, the, the, the innovation that it rec uh, uh, represents, not only in the space that you focused on, which is the focus on the voter, not on the uh, elections, uh, um, the elections officials as the customer, but the voter as the customer, um, is just a huge innovation. And uh, they've done so much work on uh, have holding public meetings and, and uh, really understanding what the voters need. Uh, just really looking forward to 
uh, not only working close, more closely with that team because of their focus, but also uh, hopefully expanding out their experience, um, their product management experience um, to other teams and uh, new open source projects, hopefully. So, well, yeah. Awesome they, talking well, to you. I, would, I will add that the sure. system includes a lot of open source components. Uh, of and, course. And that they are very interested, and they've said so publicly, about making this somehow an open source project yep. uh, in the future, to your point. So it's something to look forward to and to stay on top of, because that would be really exciting, I think. Yes, and I am looking forward to it. They, uh, they use a variety of open source projects, but their code is not dropped into the public itself that the code is behind yeah. VSAP. That's, yeah, that's what I was meant to say. So uh, thanks a lot for your time, Ginny. Uh, this has been Lincoln Shorts. So, um...